Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our Quick Shoot series and is intended to aid the Dreamcast and gaming community. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today I'd like to address one of the most commonly requested questions and topics, subjects, that I get on my channel. And specifically, it's about our friend, the Sega Dreamcast. Now, the topic at hand is the Dreamcast's ability to play burned games. How is that possible? What's the history of it? Why is it so bad? As Adam's always saying, it's bad. So let's, let's talk about that, okay? Now, in order to understand that, why the Dreamcast is capable of playing burned games, well, first you have to understand what a burned game is, as I'm sure most of you do, is the idea that you have a regular copy of a game, you clone it in some capacity, and, and you end up with one on some sort of burned media, either a uh, burned CDR, DVDR, BDR, what have you, and you're able to take that burned copy, stick it in the actual console, and just play it. Now, most consoles do not allow for this, as I'm sure most of you know. But in the early days of uh, game consoles, this was not difficult. Uh, a lot of the earliest stuff, the Sega CD, the TurboGrafx CD, the, uh, granted those are add-ons, the 3DO, the Amiga CD32, etc., they had absolutely no copy protection of any kind. Nothing on the disc uh, uh, prevented it from being ripped, nothing on the console prevented it from being read. So if you were to clone that disc, you could just pop it in, works no problem. As far as the console knows, the game is a perfect one-to-one. -one. It doesn't do any damage or anything. It doesn't know the difference. Uh, now, now, the reason that was, as far as I'm concerned, probably was simply that the idea that you could one day clone uh, your own games through a CD burner was as futuristic as a lightsaber, so they never really bothered. But I think over time, they kind of realized that either A, should be worried about that possibility, or B, they should be worried about companies in China like mass producing clones of Sega CD games or something. Just wanting to add some line of defense between uh, pirates and non-pirates, you know what I'm saying? So you, you can't just very easily clone their games. That's why you get to like the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. Now. Those consoles do not read burned games natively. They can if you know, like, you know, the swap trick or if you know how to put a mod chip in it, etc. But uh, those consoles have a line of defense that stops most people from being able to do that. There's, I, now, here's the thing. I buy a lot of used games, because you have to when you're a collector. You can't buy new games for everything, especially stuff that's much older than you or at least was only available when you were young, etc. So for example, the Sega Saturn or the PS1. Now, neither of those game, those consoles have copy protection on the disc. They only have it on the console itself. What that means is, you can take the actual disc, you can stick it in a computer on a CD drive, a DVD drive, a, a Blu-ray drive, and you can rip the data to your computer. No problem whatsoever. However, that data is useless unless you know how to actually make your console read it. Okay, now I know how to do this with just about every single CD-based console ever produced. Uh, because, in the, because, like I said, I buy a lot of used games. And when you do that, you want to make sure the game you purchased actually works. Now, most people will just pop it in the console and make sure it runs. But I find that method not to be as efficient. Because you're only reading some of the sectors of a game. Whereas, when you rip it, it has to read every single sector, and if it can't, that means there's something wrong. So the only two consoles I can't do that with are the Xbox One and the Wii U. And the Xbox One is actually capable of storing it to its own internal drive, which really just leaves the Wii U. So what I will tell you from that experience is that, and it will sound wholly ironic, because everyone knows, the Dreamcast, it plays burned games, and it played burned games so late after all the other consoles couldn't. How fucking stupid of Sega! Which is, of course, what everyone thinks. But what I'll tell you is, and it's ironic as all hell, and I swear I'll explain it, the Dreamcast actually has the best copy protection of any of them. And I'm sure you're like, no, retard, you can play the burn games. It's like, trust me, just hear me out. I know you can. But I want to explain how that was possible. So Dreamcast discs are very interesting because they are what's called a GD-ROM, a gigabyte disc ROM. Now, the Dreamcast was the only device, other than perhaps Naomi arcade hardware, that ever used this format. Now, try to wrap your head around that. All the consoles prior to that used some iteration of the CD-ROM, which is the same basic technology as like a music CD, but with obviously more data and different uh, allocations, etc., uh, allowing it to have game data. But they all basically used some iteration of that until the PlayStation 2 came along, and they all used some iteration of DVD for the most part. Even the GameCube used an iteration of DVD. 
And then the PS3 came along, and they started using Blu-ray, except for the Wii U, which uses like some unique mutated format that's similar to Blu-ray, but not quite. But they all use some those basic standards. The Dreamcast didn't. It used its own special thing. What that means is when you pop a Dreamcast game into any like CD uh, uh, drive, DVD drive, Blu-ray drive, it doesn't know what the fuck you're putting in there. Now it might have a couple extra. It might be able to read some music or something off of the game because that they sometimes made a bonus feature of the disc. In fact, a lot of Dreamcast discs would inc flat out include an extra line of uh, CD audio on there telling you this is a Dreamcast disc, not a music disc. Uh, so, yeah, that's about all you can ever get out of it. So you're, of course, like, well, then how do you rip it? Well, Dreamcast is very complicated. You have to take the Dreamcast itself, you have to have a broadband modem, you have to have knowledge of networking, and you have to have special software. When you do that, you use the Dreamcast itself as a drive to rip the data. Yeah, that's pretty complicated as opposed to most. And you're like, all right, great. So they, they rip it that way. Who cares if that's how they rip it? Yeah, that's so awesome. Obviously, it must have stopped piracy. No, it didn't. Okay, yeah. So most people can't do that. But if you do do that and you get the data on your computer, you're probably like, oh, well, good. You got it on the computer, put it on the CDR. Good. It reads. Wrong. It doesn't work either. See, the Dreamcast not only has really difficult data sectors to read, but it also prevents the console from being able to read burned versions of those same data sectors. So again, no doubt you're like, you are wrong. It plays burned games. Yes, I know. I swear to you, I will explain how that works. But the thing people forget about the Dreamcast is it doesn't just play GD-ROMs. It's actually capable of three different formats. GD-ROMs is one of them. The other one that I'm sure a lot of you know is music CDs, which is like, great, awesome, music CDs. whoop de doo But there's a third one that almost nobody knows, and yet all of us know at the exact same time. What is it? It's a format you may not, might not have ever even heard of by name. It's called MIL-CD, M-I-L-CD. Now what this was, or its intended function was, uh, when, it, when the console was coming out in Japan back in 1998, they included an extra basic format capability, and all it was was uh, with, there were going to be certain music CDs, specifically karaoke CDs, and I think only five of them were ever produced. I'm not sure the exact number, I think it was only five. Japanese-only karaoke CDs that were just music CDs, but they had an extra line of code in them that was a mill CD. And what that meant was if you popped that music CD into your Dreamcast, it would have like extra visualizations and interactivity on the, on the disc. whoop do you freaking do right? Who cares? Like I said, it was mostly never used. I don't think it was ever officially utilized in North America or Europe. But when they brought the console over, hackers started looking at it. God damn, we can't crack this GD-ROM thing. It's impossible. What do we do? And they discovered the mill CD option. And they went, wait, wait, wait. It can read data through that. Yeah, so if we take the Dreamcast data and, like, convert it, we can make it play through that. Mind fucking blown, right? So it sounds like Sega royally screwed up by including this thing. Yeah, you could argue that, but it's not really fair because the piracy, yes, it played a, it contributed to what ultimately brought the Dreamcast down, but it was, it was not the biggest factor. And ironically, that capability of being able to read games through mill CDs is kind of what keeps the Dreamcast alive now in a very zombie-like way. Because all the new games that come out, and yes, there are new games that come out for the Dreamcast, even now in 2015, some announced into the future, into 2016 and beyond, they can't possibly replicate original GD-ROMs. Even Sega can't now. They destroyed all the machines for that years ago. So the only way new data can be produced for the Dreamcast is to take advantage of the mill CD exploit. But there's an important difference that people need to know. See, back in the day, when they would rip the game through the method I previously described, they would take it and they would just kind of quickly convert it and throw it onto a, into a mill CD type format and burn it. As a result, if you tried playing one of those, the Dreamcast was not meant to run games that way. And you, you can tell. When you put a game in that way, it'll stress out and it, it will eventually brick your Dreamcast. A lot of Dreamcasts have been sent to early graves because people play burn games on them. Not a good idea. But if you make the game with the mill CD in mind, whole different ballpark, whole different ball game, sorry. Uh, they, so what that means is games like Sturmwind and uh, Gunlord and all the other ones, all the other great independent games, Ducks, Redux, and so on, 
they, uh, Alice's Mom's Rescue, I could list off all the games, why, why would we do that? Point is, they make the games with that in mind, and therefore it doesn't do any damage, and it's, it's just, I think, interesting that this, one of the things that contributed to bringing the console down is also what keeps it alive now, which is, I think, pretty cool. But on the topic of burn games specifically, if you insist on playing burn games on your Dreamcast, which is of course up to you, you know, there's no, I don't consider that an ethical dilemma at this point. I mean, Sega's not getting any money out of it, the only person you're potentially screwing is somebody on eBay. I don't care. But what you should know is that most burned versions of games for the Dreamcast will eventually brick your console. So if you absolutely insist on doing that, please, get the stuff, get the rips that were produced over the last few years. A lot of the stuff that came out in the, early, the late 90s, the early aughts when the Dreamcast was commercially relevant, those are terrible. Like I said, people just took the data and just kind of forced it onto Mill CD. But because people have taken their time now, they've really learned how that works, people now make the rips more properly. And they, they will still cause damage, and they will still be lacking certain content depending on the game, but they were nowhere near as bad as the original versions were. So I, I keep that in mind if you decide you, you want to play burn games that way. Um, but really, that's it. I just kind of f always found this topic kind of fascinating, and I know there's a lot of misconceptions about how is it possible that Sega came out with a console that late that could just read burn games. Well, now you know how that was possible. And it's interesting, actually, because when you think about it, this is the last console where that was possible, where the console came out and retail stock, it was capable of reading independent media. No console since has been able to do that. And for good reason. You don't want to encourage piracy, but it, it is interesting, isn't it? Uh, unless you include things like being able to play burned DVDs of movies or something. But as far as games go, this was the last one. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. But it is awesome that because of it, because of one of the contributions to its death, because of that, we can still have new, fresh experiences for it. I just think there's something ironic about that. But uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.